In this demonstration, we're going to be taking a look at voltage and voltage drops in a series circuit. In the last demonstration, we calculated the total current for the specific circuit. Um, the one before that, we calculated the total resistance. We combined R1 and R2, and we found the total opposition to current flow, the total resistance, and we used the total voltage. And with those two applying Ohm's law, we found the total current flow. And as I said before, current is unchanging at all points in a series circuit or is your reference. It is the easiest thing to use for all of your calculations once it's found. But just because we have the source voltage doesn't mean we're done. We now need to calculate the voltage drops at the individual components. The voltage drops in a series circuit is the total or the sum of all the voltages dropped across all of the loads or your circuit components in a series circuit. And it also has to equal the source voltage. If we do a calculation for a voltage drop at R1 and we had 30 volts and we did the calculation for a voltage drop on R2 and it was 60 volts, well, that would give us a source voltage of 90. Well, that can't work because our source voltage was given to us at 48 volts. So all we need to do then to prove that all of our math and our calculations are correct is once again apply Ohm's law only for the appropriate places. So we need to find what the voltage is. Well, it's the voltage drop. So we're going to be covering up E. And we're still going to be using I and R, but we're going to be using the appropriate values. So. In order to find the voltage drop across the individual components, you have to use their values. So once again, um, current is unchanging. So that's going to be the same for your calculation. In this case, because your own values are the same, it's also going to be the same um, calculation. But that's not always going to be the, the case. So how this is going to be written out, just so it makes sense. So the voltage drop at R1 is going to be equal to I, I total, or the, I, the current at R1, times the value of R1. That's kind of an important thing to keep in mind. We're not going to be using R total. We're applying Ohm's law. We're using I, and we're using R, but we're using the individual components. So the voltage drop at R1 is going to be equal to those values. You've got to make sure to be using those. Now, the 2 amps is unchanging, so it's going to be 2 amps of current flow times oh, excuse me, 12 ohms. So 2 amps times 12 ohms will give us a value of 24 volts. Now, that's how many volts we dropped here at R1. Now, there's a couple of different ways that you can continue on at this point. Now, we only have two resistors, so um, this is not a real tough example, but I had already pointed out that in a series circuit, the total of the sum of all the voltages dropped across all the components have to equal the source. So you could take your source voltage, E source minus the voltage drop at R1, and you could calculate R2 that way. Or you could also apply Ohm's law again. So the voltage drop at R2, in this case, is going to be your I total times the value of R2. You have a couple of different ways you can calculate it. Or E at R2 is equal to 2 amps times 12 ohms, and that will get you 24 volts there also. Now, we can also prove that here, the E source voltage of 48 volts minus our first calculation, which is 24 volts that were dropped on R1. is going to be equal to the value of R2, which in this case is 24 volts. 
so we proved it that way or you could add together the two voltage straps here and here and add together R1 and R2 and prove that it equals the source voltage of 48 volts.